Hey guys, Coach Pete here. Many fans have asked me questions about 2v1s. In this low class pro match analysis, I will talk about the early game decisions in the LPL match between OMG and EDG. Okay, so EDG wants to avoid the 2v1 because Rumble has a much harder time at the 2v1 than R. And if OMG fast pushes and rotates to mid, I think Nidalee doesn't have the wave clear to defend, so it's very hard for EDG. And also, I believe OMG wants to avoid 2v1 because a roaming Vega and Jarvan Frost will give TF a very hard time during the landing phase. So also, NAR is did pretty well against Rumble and Morgana Graves did pretty well against Koki Vega. So for these reasons, the two teams decided to do a normal lens. Jarvan started the red first and uh, he is most likely looking for ganking bottom level 2 to burn our summoners or do some damage. It's very important to know that if Jarvan first can land a combo or do some damage, then his mission is complete because the damage Jarvan does well for EDG's bottom lane had a very good advantage. However, it's very hard to gain Graves Morgana earlier and if you miss your combo, Jarvan first might be waste a lot of time. So here we see Vega make a mistake by missing the stun. And the Jarvan turned around immediately to avoid wasting more time. So on the other side, Rek'Sai is going top. And the Rek'Sai's jungle clear is probably the strongest in the game right now. Only other would be Nedley. So Rek'Sai can take Red and Wolves, Grom and go straight top because she doesn't really need the blue. And this is very important because it will catch the enemy top laner of God because he probably gonna miscalculate the gank by 20 seconds because he thinks Rek'Sai is doing his blue. So we can see here that Rexa have now pushed the minimum wave because only when it hits the turret, it will reset. And now doesn't have to push tower to do it himself at this early level. So we can see if you have a successful gank topside, Rumble have to TP back to the top turn or he gonna waste a lot of experience and gold. So OMG can remember the CD on Rumble's TP, which means they have a TP advantage after this gank. So after now got his first blood, he already has a very strong advantage over Rumble. The so OMG decides to give a lot of resource top lane to get Nar fed. And this is a very smart strategy going into a late game. Because when Nar is fed, he is able to continue split pushing top and uh, giving EDG more pressure. So we can see here one of the biggest factors when it comes to counter ganking is to understand how creep wave works. The reason Jarvan is top lane right now is because a creep wave is received by a turret and it will push towards the blue side turret. And this means that Nar can choose to freeze and Rumble will be zoned out. So Javan came top, but he didn't show himself immediately because if he shows himself, then he lost the pressure to the other lands. So you always want other lands to think that the jungler may just be around the corner. So over here, we can see Rumble going to be the brush to clean ward, and Javan is sitting behind in lane, babysitting to ensure that he can do the safe lane. So after that, Javan went about to help Rumble ward top lane before returning to jungle. So as we can see here around 6.30, it's very common. The first back to have the support go mid to place words to capture version control. So Vega has already bought a pink to gain control of certain areas. Additionally, you can also look for wrong gank opportunities if it presents itself. OMG's strategy it has, has been for most of their games is to get good going fed. Therefore, a lot of resources is put to top. So in this case, Lovely bought a side stone and awarded the whole enemy topside jungle to provide no safety. And at this point, Rek'Sai is unlikely to gain top now because the moment you show up top, EDG will get a free dragon. So we can see at 940, even though it didn't show on the map, Rumble used his OT. So I think this is a very big mistake because even if he was preparing for the dragon, he didn't have his OT available for a team fight. He pretty much OT'd for a wave of creeps. Because he wasted his OD and Natalie was pushed to her turrets, Tristan faded the OT top and tower dive Rumble. So we can see immediately after Rumble Q, you can see EDG going for Dragon because they know it will be a 4v3. This is one of the things you have to do as a top tier team, which is immediately after something has happened, you're looking for opportunities to make a counterplay. Uh, it may be taking a Dragon or a tower or still above or push your creep wave or ward in their jungle side, I mean the deep wards. So at the same time, OMG decided to take down the top turret in exchange for the dragon. So one of the strategic advantage of taking down the top turret earlier is that Rumble will forever be farming a very long lane if he decides to stay top, which can make him very valuable if the creep wave is pushing, especially with Twisted Fate and Rick's side that can teleport around the map. 
That's it for the early game analysis. If you have questions tweeting me at Liquid Peter, be sure to check out the other parts to the pro match analysis at lowclass.com.